Okay, be honest for just a minute, Work Positive Nation. How happy are you at work? How meaningful is work to you? How well do you relate to others with kindness? What about hanging in there on a tough day? Not so much. Well, my guest on this episode of the Work Positive Podcast is here to help you. She wrote, find your happy at work. So hang in there for at least 30 more minutes, listen up and discover how you can navigate work challenges and come out on the other side happier than you could ever imagine right now. Welcome to the Work Positive Podcast with your host, executive coach and culture architect, Dr. Joey Fawcett. Discover strategies and tactics that work positive as Dr. Joey talks with industry leaders who create a positive work culture that attracts top talent and reduces team turnover. Discover how you can create a work positive culture that increases productivity and profits. Here's your host, Dr. Joey. Work Positive Nation, help me welcome to this episode of the Work Positive Podcast, Beverly Jones. Beverly, welcome to the Work Positive Podcast. Well, it's wonderful to be here. I love being in a positive place. Uh, <laughs> me too. Me too. And you and I have done the work necessary to be in a positive place. In fact, that's right. Beverly Jones is your guide today, Work Positive Nation, to helping you find your happy at work. And that just happens to be the title of her book. In the show notes, you can find a hyperlink there and go pick up your copy over at Amazon today. Um, if you're on the Peloton walking the dog, nobody ever walks a cat. But anyway, uh, well, somebody in Work Positive Maybe. Nation walks a cat, right? <laughs> Maybe there's one person or something. But uh, anyway, the, it, the link's there in your show notes for you to pick up. Uh, Beverly Jones' book, Find Your Happy at Work. Bev, so excited to have you here and look forward to being on your podcast real soon, too. Tell us about this wonderful way that we can find our happy at work. Well, the, the first thing to recognize is that we all know there are many things that you cannot control about your job. Mm. We know that. But the, the first thing to understand is that so much of our happiness is not about the job. Hmm. It's not about our boss, even. It's not about how much flexibility we have. It's about how we manage ourselves in the midst of all those things. So I, I do have in the book quite a few kind of strategic suggestions and you know ways for moving ahead at work. But the most important thing to know is that it really starts with you and how you manage your own mindset and your own um, attitude every single day. And it's really important to be happy at work because your success is tied to it. And it's aside from ha wanting to have a wonderful life, you might as well have a wonderful career at the same time because they're, they have the same foundation. Yeah, they're really integrated. The first time, well, I won't say the very first time, but one of the first times I read about happiness and success being so intimately linked was in Dr. Sean Aker's book, The Happiness Advantage. Yes. And in there, he really takes on that notion that's, that's rather common as we think successful people are happy. But in fact, he flips that on its ear and says, happy people succeed. And that's, that's exactly what you remind right. me of as you're talking here. There, there's so many uncontrollables at work, my boss included, right? But there are some controllables that, that I can manage and create happiness in my work. Give us an example of one of those uh, controllables that I can actually say grace over and manage. Well, one thing is boredom. That's something that um, <laughs> is a problem for a lot of people who are Maybe they even have a job that they liked for a long time. Mm -hmm. They're in the field they want to be. But, you know, a lot of things get boring in the middle when there's not change. So there are lots of ways that you can manage boredom. One is how you break up the task. One is how you shape them around being with people, if that's something you want, or not being with people, if that's something <laughs> yeah, you want. Really. Uh, so recognizing that you can do a lot to... Um, address boredom on a, on a daily basis is a thing that is a it's a big discovery for a lot of people mm. that boredom is you know it's kind of on you quite a, a lot of the time 
Yeah, and boredom is a lot more, Bev, than just sitting around with idle time wondering what to do. Boredom can also infiltrate our work task when it's, oh, I'm doing this again. So it becomes almost an assembly line kind of mentality. How do we, how do we move beyond that assembly line mentality to discover some ways in which we can bring um, some more flavor into our work? Well, you know, I, I was an executive, as you know, and sure. uh, for quite a few years, what I've been doing is working as an executive coach. So I work with a lot of leaders mm -hmm. and also other senior professionals, lawyers and doctors and people like that. And what I found when I was first coaching, I, of course, I read everything, you know, you when you start something new, you try to do that. Mm -hmm. And it struck me that really engagement of work and that's a bigger term than boredom or not boredom but you know how you relate to work and how much satisfaction you get if you look at all of the many studies the engagement at work tends to be tied to three things the purpose or the mission that's tremendously important the values uh, that are in, um, engaged for you when you're at work the people who are around you, that can be your customers, or if it's not your favorite job, but you're putting your kid through school, that can make it meaningful. Mm. Um, and then, you know, the processes, your expertise, how you do things. So what I tend to do with clients at the beginning is to look, go through the triangle, okay. um, talk about why am I doing this? Why is the organization doing it? Are those things aligned? Very often, a, a good way to get started, if if you're on your own, is to start journaling. You know, just a few minutes every day. Mm -hmm. And one way to do it is to every day write about your purpose or who are the people who are engaged, um, what the processes are. But the the interesting thing I find found working with leaders when I I talk to them because. One question is, you know, I'm, I'm new at this job. I'm really excited about it. But these people, they're just not engaged. They're really mm. bored. They're not paying any attention <laughs> to me. What can I do? Mm. And my observation has been that you can't, like, do one thing and have it please everybody. That a leader does well if they're able to focus on individual people and kind of go through the triangle as each with each of them. Mm -hmm. In order to do the triangle as a leader, it's really good to start with yourself. So even if I'm working with somebody who's a leader of quite a large organization, mm -hmm. I think it's always good to start with understanding those three P's, the the, the purpose, the people, and, and the processes that are involved in your daily job. And if you start focusing on those, you can shift a lot of things quickly. Wow, you sure can. And it sounds like to me that this triangle can help leaders reduce team turnover as well. So talk to us about how that triangle can can close that back door. Even I totally agree that having not a toxic culture, having a positive culture, I know you've talked about that a lot, and yeah. it's on everybody's mind these days. Yeah. Uh, but a supportive, positive culture isn't enough for each individual. Hmm. We're all kind of different. And so if the leader starts using their superpower, which is listening, hmm. they can very quickly with each team, each team member, start to understand what some of the concerns might be. Maybe uh, a group is doing a great job, but they're kind of bored with it and they don't have anything at what any idea of what happens to their product because they're not connecting with their customers. They're not knowing how it's making a difference. So under people, maybe one of the things you do with the team is you invite in customers. You, whatever the complaints are, instead of feeling defensive, which is so easy when we're trying to be good leaders, mm -hmm. you put aside your defensiveness, just see what people are um, talking about. You can get ideas on how to, um, bring in um, the contact with people. You can change the process. You can you can develop a deeper understanding, the mission, whatever it is. It, because people will, if you listen, eventually people always talk. Yeah, and about their favorite subject, which is themselves, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so as a leader, and you have a unique opportunity to actively listen at that point and make application exactly. of this triangle to discover for each person. So what I hear you saying is strategically, Beth, 
Uh, we want to create a positive work culture and do the things which we know to do, but we want to make that tactically very specific. And so we can take this triangle of uh, people, purpose and process to each person and to ask questions and actively listen that will help close that back door and reduce team turnover, which of course, high team turnover, as everyone knows, uh, really sucks a lot of cash out of the company. So Bev, how do I take this triangle of people, purpose, and, and the process. How do I take that into the attraction of top talent process? Well, one thing you do is you create a happy workforce. I mean, you can't fake that. So if you're <laughs> trying to bring in top people, if you're uh -huh. trying to build a reputation, if you're trying to win awards, you, you kind of take care of the people who are there. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, at, the, at the same time, if you're trying to attract the top people or new people, it mm -hmm. goes back to listening. Um, okay. It's never a bad idea to go out to the community, go kind of network around, listen at uh, events and have a sense, understand the kind of who you're targeting and understand mm -hmm. what's driving them as individuals. You don't have to analyze the entire system, but mm -hmm. even listening to a few individuals is a good way to start preparing your message. And then again, um, when you're dealing with a one-on-one, -on -one, listening is a big part of that too. Mm, yeah. So in the actual interviewing process, I can begin to unpack who are some of the people that you find that you team with best, what processes help you uh, actually achieve your goals for work. And, and then that alignment of purpose individually with the company purpose seems to me to be of great importance. So asking those questions in the interviewing process would be really helpful. And a great question is, tell me about times when your work was most satisfying. Mm. What were the things that made it satisfying? And how, what did you learn there to take either as a leader for other people or mm. managing your own life? What, what have you learned have been essential parts of satisfying work for you? Mm. Oh, yeah, that's an amazing question. So you just mentioned something I, I, I think we don't talk about enough or we can't talk about enough maybe and that is managing ourselves um, and that self-care how do we create a work culture that certainly is positive but not only gives permission but encourages people to care for themselves let me make a couple of suggestions first is okay. you know 10 years ago if you talked about well-being in the workplace people kind of thought you were weird but <laughs> since covid Mm. We can be explicit about it. We can say, we want this to be a healthy place. Mm. We know these things like uh, light and um, opportunity to, uh, to sit comfortably and talk with other people. Those things matter in the space. We know mm. that for some people, they never want to be in an office and flexibility <laughs> right. allows them to get outside and do those things. So, so you can be pretty explicit. You can have a you can have a code, you can have a mission, you can have a statement, and you could do things like having fruit juice and not just sodas. Uh -huh. But the starting point is often for the leaders themselves to mm -hmm. manage their own well-being. And the thing is, the great thing about well-being, it's, it's, we're such integrated systems, we human beings. Yes, we and are. And our, our brains, our minds, our bodies, our spiritual lives, our emotions, all of those things are connected and by being aware of those things you can change the state of your health and well-being so that if you are feeling really stressed and you can't make a decision you can enter any of those realms and exercise can help you if you're the leader mm. taking time off can help you as a leader um, spending time uh, with other people can help you. There are many things you can do. So as a leader, you can model and you can be explicit. I'm going to be on vacation. Please don't call me unless it's an emergency. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to call you. That kind of modeling healthy living is is much more doable. And, and I think it's much more expected now. And really, I've you know, as a coach, I've worked with leaders who were super stressed and felt they couldn't leave their people for a minute. They had to micromanage. But as soon as they managed their own well-being and got out of that constant fight or flight mode, 
mm. and became kind of more centered, healthy people. Mm. Uh, their leadership uh, style changed and the organizations changed. So part of creating organization that's healthy and not toxic is having leaders who are willing to work on their own well-being. Mm, yeah. And at that point, you're modeling the kind of behavior that you want others to have. So if you're mm-hmm. saying putting boundaries around your vacation time, for instance, or around some meditation time during the day, something like that, that's really setting a healthy model for others. Mm-hmm. That's right. And you can do things. You can have yoga at the office or you can have uh-huh. moments for meditation or all of those kind of things. There's no one thing. It's an awareness of self-care and caring for others is really important. Mm -hmm. And the people you're modeling for may may have a different thing, but you've got to give permission to take Mm -hmm. care of themselves. So that means they have the flexibility to do it, but they won't really believe you mean it unless you're doing it yourself. Yeah. Oh, wow. Integrity is so important, isn't it? That's a big statement. Mm-hmm. They're not going to believe it unless yeah. you're doing it yourself. Yeah. The the old adage about uh, don't do as I do, do as I say, right? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> right. You know, that, that's just not going to cut it today because there's just too much transparency and authenticity as you work to create that positive work culture. Bev Jones is my guest today. By the way, you can find Bev on LinkedIn. If you'll just go there and uh, search for Beverly Jones. She's a great connector on LinkedIn. That's the way she and I got connected uh, initially. And you can go to Amazon and find her book, Find Your Happy at Work. And the link to that book on Amazon is in your show notes if you can't get to it right now and you're you're at a space where you're driving or listening uh, while you're doing something else. Bev, you've had an illustrious career as an executive. You were a trailblazer and innovator, particularly for your gender uh, among executives. And so you've seen a lot of challenges come up for companies that are seeking to have the kind of work culture that really promotes happiness Mm -hmm. at work and this alignment of company and personal purpose and seeking to put processes in that help grow and develop people both professionally and, and personally. What are some of the more common challenges that you've seen? Wow. I think that it really has varied over the years. You know, in early days, there were very narrow ideas of what a professional was like, and only a few people could fit within that mold. So a challenge, huge challenge, has been understanding that there are a lot of ways to be successful, and Mm. there are a lot of different kinds of people who are doing different kinds of things. So something that's happened really pretty rapidly in the last few years is uh, the world has changed to include all different kinds of people and styles and preferences. There are many ways to get the job done. So that's something uh, that's been like a huge battle. And I, you know, I'm feeling more optimistic than I have for a long time. There are all kinds of new challenges, uh, artificial intelligence and mm. working remotely and how do you build a team when you don't sit in the same room but mm. you know i think so much of dealing even with the uh, many things that we're dealing with related to technology get mm-hmm. back to some of the basics it's it's really a lot about your value system, your authenticity, Mm -hmm. uh, how you regard other people, how you treat them. Mm -hmm. Um, Those kinds of things um, take different forms, but they are always going to be in a critical part of building a team. Mm, Yeah. What are some of those core values that you see when lived out by executives and teams that really accelerate the team members finding they're happy at work? Well, a characteristic is an ability to feel gratitude mm. and to and to value kindness. Those are human characteristics that I think when I was a young lawyer, you know, right out of law school, mm. we were not encouraged to grow in terms of kindness or gratitude. We were, you know, <laughs> there weren't many women around. We were trying to be tough and we wore clothes that looked like men's suits with short skirts. It was ridiculous. Um, but yes, it I, was I, ridiculous, I, but it was what we were all doing then, right? It's what we were doing. Yeah, thank but, God we developed but, a lot since that time. I think there's one of the things that makes us happiest is if we are kind and we can start by 
being kind to ourselves. You can start with your inner circle. You Mm. can start looking for ways to make more effort to put other people at ease. If you're in a room and there are a bunch of people who don't know each other, you can look for small ways Mm. to be kind. And the research shows that there's nothing that turns around your attitude as quickly as if you act in a kind way. Mm. If you're kind to another person, that tends to accelerate because there's this back and forth between you and the person. Uh But being kind makes you feel good. Now, the kind of the twin of that is gratitude. Gratitude, And I, I think that's a tip that lots of people know that if you're really feeling down and it feels hopeless, just sit down and write three things that are you can feel grateful for in the current situation and gratitude can snap you out of mm-hmm. uh, of, of feeling like despair. But um, mm-hmm. kindness and gratitude, I think, kind of work together. So those are good starting points if you want to make a difference in a yeah, workplace. I like that. Almost like uh, different sides of the same coin, right? Because it moves mm-hmm. the needle so much towards creating a positive work culture. We, in our Seven Keys to Work Positive Coaching program, in fact, as a part of the mental dynamic, the perceived core practice, teach that very tactic you're talking about, the gratitude diary, and encourage persons to do it just yeah. before they go to sleep at night. You know, just list three mm-hmm. positive things in physically write it down. Um, Brain science research shows that a pen and paper are a little bit better than typing it. But if you prefer to type, you can you can type it into some sort of folder or document that you have. Here are three things that happen. And what I like to do, Bev, is to go back and read those over uh, later. And it doesn't have to be just work things. I mean, like yesterday here on little farm we live on, I got to play for an hour outside with our daughter, our granddaughter. And it was just, she's three years old. It was a marvelous day. So, you know, I went to sleep with that wonderful seed planted in my mind and woke up feeling much more refreshed this morning. So gratitude well, and kindness. And, yeah. Yeah. When you did that, you were kind to your granddaughter but you're also a bunch of other things. Um, you're having fun. You were playing. Playing is different than uh, oh, yeah, you feel sure. different than work sometimes. So play yeah. helps. But you were outside. And one of the simplest yes. things for those of us like you and I who spend a lot of time in the country, one of yeah. the simplest way to snap out of kind of your worst feelings or your high anxiety is to step outside and be in nature. There's, Mm. again, the research shows there's a tremendous connection between human beings and the natural world. Mm. And even a small bit of time can, it can, it can be healthy for you. It can change your heart rate, Mm -hmm. but it can change your attitude very quickly. So stepping outside is another big thing. Yeah. Oh, it really is. Yeah. I think we were born to stay outdoors, but <laughs> that's just, that's just my bent. Anytime I can feel, uh, I would say the wind through my hair, Bev, but if you're watching this on YouTube, you, you know, that's not a thing. Um, maybe the wind across my head, right? A little, little slight breeze on the little mountain we live on here, uh, the start of the Appalachian chain, which continues up to where you live. So it's really mm-hmm. good for you to get out of DC where you've lived for 38 years and, and to get into Northern Virginia and some, and some countryside there. It helps your attitude, but also, as you were saying, there are physiological benefits too, lowering blood pressure and things like that. Oh, it's so. wonderful to be able to regularly spend time outside. Yeah, exactly. That's why I so appreciate um, office buildings that have green space uh, inside, you know, when there's a lot of vegetation that they plant and things like that. And as you can see, my office, well, you see part of my office here, if you're watching, uh, is I I love philodendrons. And so they're everywhere filtering the air and just bring a little extra light into into where I am and what I'm doing. Beverly Jones is on LinkedIn. Go there and uh, get connected with her. Also, you can go to Amazon and find her book, Find Your Happy at Work. And that's what we're talking about today on this episode of the Work Positive Podcast. Bev, uh, Work Positive Nation always wants to know from my guests, what's one thing? So, Bev Jones, what's your one thing that you would encourage Work Positive Nation to begin doing today to create a positive work culture right where they are? Learn something new. You can change how your brain operates, even if you learn one new word. Uh-huh. If you learn one small thing, it changes how you think about things. It changes your attitude. Mm. And it gives you a little um, spike of happiness when you learn something new. And if you 
build learning something new into your work life, I guarantee it's going to take you to great places. Oh, that's an amazing one thing to do. Learn something new today, Work Positive Nation. I've learned lots of things new from you today, Bev Jones. Thank you so much for your wisdom, for allowing us to benefit from your experiences and learnings. And uh, just really grateful for this time and wisdom today. Go find Bev on LinkedIn. It's Beverly Jones. And go right now to Amazon or your wherever fine books are sold. And, and, and uh, one find other your thing. happy at work. Uh-huh. Can, can, can I mention one other thing? Sure. So you're going to be on my podcast, ah. which is Jazzed About Work, and we're going to you know, have some more conversation. So down the road, look up Jazzed About Work if you want to see us talking again. Oh, that'll be amazing. Thank you so much for that opportunity to help me get on the other side of the mic and put you on the other side of the mic. So it's great to uh, have a mic swap with you, Bev Jones. Thank you so much. And thanks again for your time and wisdom today. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Work Positive Podcast. Please share this podcast with your friends who are HR and small business leaders so they can do one thing today to create a positive work culture that increases productivity and profits. I'd like to give you a free work positive course just for listening. It's called Something to Talk About, and it's transformed the work conversations of so many people all over the world. Get your free copy when you go to workpositive.today slash something to talk about and you can start transforming your conversations today. Remember, it pays to work positive.